Google Ads for real estate is one of the most effective marketing strategies for real estate agents today. Home buyers and home sellers Google everything. They Google their intentions way before they even bring them up to their spouses. You know, you want to have your ducks in a row before going up to bat. In today's Google Ads tutorial, I'll show you how simple it is to be found whenever those home buyers and home sellers are looking for your services. Let's begin. Time founder of Echo Real Estate Advisors. If we're just meeting, welcome to the channel that brings actionable content to grow your business through online marketing. So if that sounds beneficial, consider subscribing. Before jumping over to the computer, remember that you can always reference this video when you're out there implementing. Also, you can reference the free Google Ads Essentials course, link in description. Okay, before we actually go into creation mode, I wanna show you a tool that is heavily underutilized right now, especially as I'm looking at the comments, getting the emails, getting the phone calls from agents running Google ads. And that is the keyword planner. To get here, all you have to go is to the tools and settings and go to the keyword planner. There are two things that you need to focus on. If you have some keywords that you're interested in and are just not sure how they're going to perform, you can actually get a realistic view and some projections on how they can actually do in your market. So by doing that, or in order to do that, all you have to do is go here to the right side, get some volume and forecast, We'll visit discover new keywords in a few seconds. And then you can check your volume and potential forecast right here. So we're gonna put real estate agent. Just keeping it simple. We're gonna get started. And then you see the amount of clicks, impressions, possible costs, click through rate, and so much data almost as if you have run the ad. Notice that I said almost because all of this is fantastic information to have. Take from this more of the volume. Just take that into consideration because your ads are going to perform differently. They aggregate all of this information and that's fantastic, but your ads are going to impact it drastically. That's why you need a split test. That's why you ultimately want to get an idea, but still implement. Don't only take this as as the law take this as a good resource for you to look at but and you can make certain de determinations from here like if there's enough volume but beyond that be cautious and you can select various locations so if you want to see what it looks like in texas or i don't know what i click there right there if you want to target texas you save and then you can see the differences. So real estate agent, and then you can keep adding and so on and so forth. So I wanted to show you that because it's, it's pretty cool. It's good information to have before you're out there actually spending your money. Any intel that you have will greatly help you. Now we go over to the discover new keywords. This is what you're most familiar with when you type in real estate agent. This is to give you ideas. This is to give you uh, the search volume, the competitiveness, average bid cost, and give you more of more information than what you saw on the on the projections tab, on the volume tab. This is more to give you ideas and really help you in your marketing journey. So you see real estate agents, you see realtor websites. You can download all of this information by going up here and then assorting them, seeing which monthly searches are, um, are beneficial to you, which ones have low competition, identifying the low hanging fruit. So much information that you can build from here rather than getting to the ad set and then trying to come up with some keywords that might be good to use in your ad. So I just wanted to start off with that before we actually dove in and started creating the ad. 
because these are heavily underutilized. Again, I'm getting these messages, I'm getting the calls, and they're not bad. It's just it gave me the opportunity to present these items where if there had been a little bit of pre-work done up front, they would have saved themselves, in some cases, thousands of dollars, Where, um, but we were able to square that away. So just know that that's available. Okay, now we actually create a campaign. We're gonna go to the plus, new campaign, and what we're going to do today is we are gonna actually go with, let's go with leads. And then we're gonna do a search type of campaign. We want websites visits, and we're gonna go to continue. The reason I was asking me for my business website at that moment was when we go to the ad set level and start creating the campaigns, or I'm sorry, creating the ad sets, it was gonna give me some suggestions on which keywords to use. We don't need that for the time being. All right, and then when it comes to networks, it is going beyond the Google ecosystem or the actual Google search into Google's ecosystem. I don't want to do that. I don't want to include Google search partners. I don't want to include Google's display network. I want to only advertise on Google when people are searching. That is one, what I want to advertise. That's what I want to optimize. All right, so we're going to go with the date, leads, and what type of ad? Let's just say listing. All right, for naming purposes, I just go with the type of campaign and then the ad that I'm running. And I forgot to include who we're gonna be targeting. Let's just say we want to target realtor near me for my naming convention the campaign the type of campaign the ad set so that who I'm going to be targeting and then the type of ad that I'm going to be running that's how I do it just to show you the different settings that you have you can get creative you can start on, on certain days stop on certain days you can have the campaign URL option, so it helps you with the tracking. Um, don't want to overcomplicate this, so we're going to skip through these. But you have different options available to you if you want to get a bit more granular in your marketing. And then here we're going to, we're going to leave, no, let's, let's market in Dallas. Don't think we've done da Dallas in a while. When you go to location options, remember, you can select people that are in or interested in, but for our purposes, we want to take listings only in Dallas. So we're going to market to the people that are in or regularly in. So people that are actually living in the area rather than our tourists or passers by. Okay. And then languages, we're going to stick with English. If I was going with Spanish, then I would actually put the add in Spanish, but for our example today, I'm not going to do that. The audiences, this is pretty cool. This is the people, this is the demographics, this is the interest, this is the type of, types of people that are gonna be seeing your ad. So not only are you presenting what they're looking for, you can uh, optimize your ads based off of what they're looking for, but the profile of your audience can also be done here as well. So you can target people that are actively searching for um, real, real estate. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and show you that one. Where you go to actively in market, so looking to make a purchase in commercial properties, moving relocation, residential properties for sale. So you Notice that you can actually target those people that are actively searching for real estate properties that are for sale. So people that are looking to buy. That is super powerful. You can target based off of who they are and profiles, their behavior that they are exhibiting at that time. 
So this is called the in-market type of an ad. This would be more of the demographics. So you get their par parental status, education, home ownership status, how powerful would that be, hint, hint. And then how they are have interacted with your business. It's super important that you have your Google tag set up in order for you to do that. So if they visited your YouTube channel, website visitors, combined list, super powerful stuff. I know I'm skimming through a few items up here, but I just want to give you the full breadth. And then we can, actually there's several other videos in this channel that go very myopic into specific strategies. So you're going to want to check those out as well. Right now, I want to show you the Google ads, again, just opportunity that you have in real estate that is heavily underutilized right now. We're going to go with a daily average and we're going to start off with $20 a day. Delivery method is going to be either standard or accelerated. Accelerated uses up your budget as quickly as possible. Standard, it, it'll use your budget very much so at the very beginning, but then it's going to tell off. So on average, you can expect to spend $20 right here. Just know that that's not always going to be the case every single day. Some days you're going to spend $5. Some days you're going to spend $50. But after the 30 days, you will have spent $20 on average. That way you know what to expect with your budget. Here, you can optimize or you can bid based off of conversions or clicks as well as impression share. For this tutorial, we're going to go based off of conversions. Note, if you have not set up a conversion, this will not work for you. As soon as you press enter, it's going to say fantastic. It's under review, but you're going to notice that it never turns on. You're actually going to get a notification saying, hey, set up a conversion because you haven't done it yet. In order to do that, you're going to go to tools and settings up here and set up a conversion right there. For our purposes today, we're not going to cover the conversion, the actual creation of the conversion, because there's a lot of other videos in this channel that break it down step by step. Just know that in order for you to run this conversions ad, you will need to have set up some conversions in order for you to actually get this ad to work. We're not going to select a target cost per action. We want some data beforehand. As far as ad extensions, this is something that I cannot overemphasize. Use ad extensions. Right off the bat, you see get up to 15% higher click-through rate by showing additional information on your ads. So your ad is going to have uh, three titles. So three titles and they're going to go one at the top, another one a little bit over here, and then one down here. Bad representation on the image. I should actually just, um, on the camera, I should actually show you what it looks like. But you're gonna have three titles and you're gonna have two descriptions, two descriptions. Call outs or extensions, I'm sorry, will make that ad bigger. So site link, ex site link extensions, you can actually hyperlink different parts of your website here. So if you have a website for buyers, for sellers, for investors, whatever the case may be, you can actually hyperlink them specifically to that. Call out extensions. If something that's important about your business you want to highlight, it's not hyperlinked, but you can highlight in your, in your ad, that would be there. Call extensions would put your phone number there. You can track these calls as well. And an additional amount of extensions. I encourage you to go through them and actually read them to get some, get a good feel for them because they are super, super cool. For our purposes, I'm just gonna include site link extensions so you see that they're available. I have various that I've worked with. So I'm not gonna worry too much about getting these right. I will just, um, well, these are Spanish. I'm just gonna do find my new home and site link extensions, you can, Let's see, let's see. You can do four, but you need to at least include two if you're going to include these. I didn't even read those, but just so you see what they look like, that's what site link extensions are. And these are hyperlinks. They don't have to be to a unique part of your website. 
I encourage you that they are, but they don't have to. So you can actually use the same URL for every single one of them. And that's how you use it. We're gonna go save and continue. This is our keyword section. So this is our ad, ad set where we decide where we want to show up. So if somebody is typing in, let's say real estate agent near me, that would be a phrase. And if I leave it as is, it would be known as a broad match. So anything close to this right here, my ad would show up. If I were to put parentheses right here, only keywords that have this as, let's see, searches that have this as a search would show up if they just showed up real estate agent near me or Let's just say if somebody were to put best real estate agent near me, it would still show up. So it's looking for the phrase, in other words. So if you have things prior, if you have things after, as long as it has that phrase, it's going to show up. Now, if you bracket this, if you end up putting a bracket, you're telling Google only to show your ad if it is the exact verbiage that you bracket. That's it. So. For our purposes, we're going to leave it as real estate agent near me. Now, there's another thing called broad match modifier, where I don't want to get too technical with it, but if you were to put a plus in front of agent, as long as other search phrases have agent within them, it would show up. Your ad would show up. For our purposes, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that at the moment. I. I invite you to check that out as well. Just know that that's also available to you. They just don't highlight it below. So that's called a broad match modifier, which is another way to um, select the ad group or select the keywords that you're trying to show up, your ad to show up with. And then to get keyword ideas, remember when I, I did not include my website at the beginning of the ad, you can type in your website here and it'll give you ideas. Had I done that at the beginning, it would already have populated and given me ideas, but just wanted to let you know that you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So for our purposes, we're not gonna do that. And then this is where we actually create our ad. You would tell, tell it which landing page or website um, would you like to direct all of your traffic to, and you well, you put the URL there, you get three headlines. In the past, you were only able to do two. Now you can do three, which you'll see right over here. Best listing agent. Top real estate agent. Sell home fast. Not worry too much about the Add a copy, just want to show you, show you what it looks like. So these, these will be the titles. And then you have a vanity URL. So then we can say Dallas. This URL does not have to be active. This is just a vanity URL or a phantom link that it gives this impression that you're only focusing in Dallas or is solely, this ad is solely created for Dallas. So it gives that sense of, hey, I specialize in this area where you may or may not. And then the description will be down here where you get 90, yeah, 90 characters to describe whatever you want. I'm just going to say best realtor list with me and then sell home fast. If you would have included um, site links, no, not site links. If you would have included callouts and a callout extension on the previous screen, you would select them right here. I'm sorry, you would select them down there and they would show up right here. Then URL options, you don't have to do anything with this. It's just a tracking. It helps you with tracking and other more advanced information that you don't necessarily need to worry yourself with. And did I, what did I do? Okay, I mistakenly 
X'd out of it. But this is a good exercise so you see exactly how to fix that. All you have to do is go here, go to ads and extensions, and then create the ad. We're gonna go with the text ad, set an ad group. We're gonna use the ad group that we had already selected, and we're back on that screen that we were just in before I mistakenly X'd out. And really, that is all there is to it. So let me know, are you using Google Ads? Have you been using the Google Ads Planner that we saw at the very beginning of the tutorial? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, remember that you have access to this video whenever you're running your ads, but also you have access to the free Google Ads Essentials course, link in description. Outside of that, if you found value today, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so we can talk again soon.